The Oregon Coast Scenic Railway, in conjunction with Orange Stripe Productions, presents an introduction to Lubricating the New Number 2 Steam Locomotive. We like to call this recent edition the New 2. This is the Pulson Logging Locomotive that recently came and joined us. In this presentation, I'm going to be introducing you to the lubricating of this new locomotive. Not going to hit everything, not going to talk about all the little stuff like the dynamo and little things that don't get checked all the time. This will be the regular stuff you're going to be checking. And if you want to be a good fireman or engineer with the Oregon Coast Scenic, you got to know the lubrication. Well, we're going to start out with a tender here. These are friction or plane bearings, which means they need to be checked every day. There should be a small puddle of oil, not a lake of oil in them. And as you're looking in there, we'll have a little look-see. And you can see that there is a puddle of oil, but not a great big lake. You don't want the oil to get all over the place. The next thing I like to check and fill every morning is a hydrostatic lubricator. There's a steam valve up above, and there's one in the face and that's the drain. What you want to do is you want to start out, have your little cup, and check and see if the hydrostatic lubricator is under pressure for some reason if there's still steam on it. Because you don't want to take that filling plug off, which has happened more than once when it's under pressure, then it blows oil all over the place. So you want to make sure that all of the pressure is out of the lubricator before you take and you open the fill hole. And there we go. And when you put this plug back in, it should be snug, not way tight. You don't want to cram it on there. You want to be able to get it off easily. And as it unscrews, it goes round and round a bunch of times, don't drop it. This is relatively soft metal, and if you drop it, you're going to wreck the threads. Now what we want to do, we want to drain the water from yesterday. The way this hydrostatic lubricator works is that oil floats and as it starts to utilize the oil that's in there the steam turns to water and replaces the volume. So now that we've gotten all of the water out of the lubricator we're going to be putting steam oil in here. Now I want to mention that as of the production of this video there is some question about which oils go in which place since we've just got this locomotive but for sure the hydrostatic lubricator always uses steam oil. Now after you fill the steam oil up, I always like to once again give it a little bit of a drain to make sure I have all the water out. And as you can see I have a headlight on. I personally like doing all of the lubrication with a headlight so I can actually be seeing what's going on. Okay, it's out to the compressor. This is the next thing I like to do. And these compressors, this is another one that we know what we're using for the fluid. It's ATF, Automatic Transmission Fluid. And once again, these are very soft metal items, so don't drop them. Once again, you don't crank them on hard. They should be just snug. Now, once you get the caps off, we have a little applicator for the ATF. And as you're filling it, only bring the oil up to that ring that you see there. If you take and you overfill these, it'll make a heck of a mess. And then put a little bit of oil on what we like to call the donuts and these are the lubricators which help the shaft of the two-stage compressor uh, be lubricated so make sure to put some oil on those now that we're back in the cab underneath the foot plate here is the buffer between the tender and the locomotive I like to put a little oil down in there now there's a number of these oil and greasing blocks around on the chassis. The long one is for oil, the short ones are for standard grease fittings. And there are a number of different places that we put the oil in on a regular basis, the grease about once a week. The new two locomotive here was built in 1912 so it's quite a bit older than our standard number 25 that we use so it requires a whole lot of additional oiling. Now this is part of your valve gear and in this part of the valve gear there are four places to fill with oil on each side. 
So you have two here, and then you gotta turn your can around, and you go for the other side for two more, and you just fill these tubes all the way up. So you fill them up, and then you move forward to the other section of the valve gear. There's two little cups way down low. There's the other one. Generally you can reach both of these at the same time. And then you want to put some oil on the sliders that go up and down. Then there's two cups up higher on each part of the valve gear assembly. And then there are a bunch of little small holes all over. Continuing on forward, there's two little cups way up forward. You gotta reach way inside. This is for the pivot for the brakes. And then you have a number of these little drip cups. And once again, oh, it's jury's still out about what you put in them, but you fill them up pretty much every time you stop. And I find the long nose can works best. You can use the bigger hole like this one. And this is for the crosshead lubrication. I would like about three turns to open them up. And you'll see there's two of them on here. You fill these up basically every time you stop. A lot of the other stuff you only do in the morning, but these you do again and again. Okay, and down inside for the piston, there is a little wick that you have to put some oil down inside. Here you can see Sammy's filling them up with the bigger one instead of the little one. While you're there, after you get all these cups filled up, here we go, come on. There's going to be more little cups around too. So as you can see, there's some cups just outside of the frames. So you'll be filling those up also. And then before you walk away, you put a little oil right on the crosshead just to make sure that it's ready to go. From there, as I mentioned earlier, there's all these little holes all over the place. You just got to look for them. And after you've done this a few times, you got a pretty good idea of where they all are. Just make sure to get as many of them as you can, when you can. And there's another little hole inside of there. So just take your time and look around. And here's another lubricating point. This is a connector for the valve. Put a little bit in the wick and then put a little bit around the area that it wears on. On each one of the main bearings there are two wicks, one on either side of the main bearing. And on these wicks what you want to do is you want to oil them up good every time you can reach them. So basically every time the locomotive stops go out and see where you can reach. If you can get one one time cool, if not well the next time you stop you'll be able to reach it. Getting one side of the wicks is better than getting neither. The last thing we're going to talk about is the hard grease. Now the hard grease has a special tool that you see right here. And this is for all the main bearings. All the main connecting rods I should say. And this is a special kind of stuff. What you do is you take and you shove some of this hard grease in and you squeeze it in and it's, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to get this stuff in. How come we got the old guy putting the hard grease in? Anyway, one thing you want to be very careful of is don't put your fingers in the little hole. Because if you put your fingers in the little hole and somebody pushes down on the tool, well, you lost your finger. So just be real careful about doing this hard grease. And just like that, we've got it all lubed up and it's ready to go. If you're very careful about the lubricating and very attentive, you too can come and be one of the volunteers here at the Oregon Coast Scenic Railway. And you can be sitting right there, right there where Sammy is. Hey, thanks for your help, Sam. Talk to you guys later.